Hi, Audrey, nice to meet you. Thank you, Audrey. Hi, how are you? Good morning, Audrey. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> Hi, Audrey. Hi. Thank you, Audrey. Good morning, Audrey. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. Talk with Audrey. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Good job. Hey, you know the mirror. I love it. Welcome to the special edition of Talk with Audrey. As you know, in addition to my profiles each week, I also feature interviews and lifestyle information with authors, entrepreneurs, and experts from the health, fitness, travel, financial, and entertainment industries. I also like to devote time to, well, talking with interesting people from all walks of life. And I've noticed that whenever I find myself wondering, well, now what? someone would say something or do something that would inspire me and set my wheels in motion again. I might not even know them personally. They were people who had quite simply possessed wisdom and or learned lessons of resilience that I hadn't yet. But I was always grateful for the moments I spent with them. And it's my hope that the moments you spend with my guests this week will inspire, motivate, and encourage you to pursue your passion, whatever it is. And now I'd like you to meet Eleanor Linen, an artist whose medium is anything she can put her hands on, but her passion is the art of gift wrapping. She has produced spectacular gift presentations for major retailers, corporate clients, CEOs, and celebrities, and has been featured on television, in magazines, art galleries, and museums. Eleanor exemplifies the spirit of entrepreneurship by encouraging us to tune in to the signs that point us toward our destiny. I can tell you one thing, though. After this interview, you'll never ever look at a box the same way again. Why? Well, she's quite simply elevated gift wrapping to an art form and published a book appropriately titled Uniquely Gifted. And she is. But how'd she get there? Well, I'm going to let her tell you. I am a mixed media artist and a designer. It just so happened that my beginning palettes in all of this happened to be boxes, gift wrapping boxes. I have learned to have a tremendous love for the architecture of a box. We're using these things every single day. We don't even think about all the different ways that we use boxes. My job to my audience is to show them how a box, a simple thing, can be manipulated to be something absolutely exquisite. People ask me all the time, why did I select boxes as my medium that I work with that is kind of my medium of preference? It's because I had a store for many, many years and I couldn't gift wrap. And two of my best employees were out, my only two employees were out, and a woman came by, she said, uh, she, I guess she purchased about a thousand dollars worth of merchandise. It's a very artsy store like me. And um, anyway, she said, I'm going to work. I'm going out for an hour. I'll be back. Could you please wrap these things? Now I knew I could not wrap a lick. And so I made the attempt and what happened was an abomination. And when she came to pick them up, she said, Eleanor, I really love you, but I need my money back. This isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. Now, you only need to learn that lesson one time and one time only. So I went to my back studio there at the store. I taught myself how to rap that day. Then maybe, I guess, uh, maybe six weeks later, another woman came by. She purchased $800 worth of things, my second guardian angel. And she says to me, you know, I would buy more things from you if your wrap was as impressive as the items that you were selling. So I said, okay, now I don't find, this is not criticism. These are angels coming to you and they're gonna further wherever you're going if you just open your ears and you listen. I did. And so I went to my back room again. I said, I can do something. I was an art major. So then I started with fabrics first. I went from fabrics to jewels to uh, pieces of metal. Then I started putting feet on them and all kinds of appendages. The next thing you know, I'm on NBC as kind of their gift and gift wrapping guru. So that's how that started. People began to buy 
the items and also the gift wrapping, it became the entire presentation. How do I know what's going to work on any particular package that I'm working on? I kind of move by the spirit so that if I've already designed something, and again, I've designed something in my head already. So then it's just a matter of saying, okay, so for that design, what do we need to make it happen? What do we need to make the magic of that design? And again, my job is to produce magic, especially at the tail end, which is at the recipient's end. My gifts, what I create, there is no day there is no moment of the day that when I'm working that I don't absolutely know for sure that my work is divinely inspired. I, many people have asked me at what point did I realize that somewhere or another I was blessed and had this gift and that I was supposed to share it. So when I think about my angel, my gift wrapping angel letting me know and tapping me on the shoulder and in my brain to say this is a time I, I think at some point along the way, there were several points, and each one took me to a different step. I first knew after the first angel seemed to come by that I needed to do more. Then the second person saying I needed to do more, again, if you're listening and you tune in to what's around you, you usually get all the answers. So if two people say to you, you can do more, then obviously you can. Why put a ceiling on what you can do? So go for the whole kit and caboodle. I'd like to invite you to follow Talk With Audrey on Twitter and on Facebook. Simply visit talkwithaudrey.com where you can also sign up for my free weekly newsletter for access to exclusive web content and information about upcoming shows. She's produced countless numbers of spectacular gift presentations and realizes yet another dream that she attributes to divine intervention. I, I gotta tell you, Audrey, my mom, she's passed now, but she's always with me. And from the time I was very little, said to me, you can do anything. And that's a mantra that I live by every single day. For every piece that I do, I hope that that is my accomplishment. But at the same time, um, I don't want anyone to pigeonhole me and say, okay, she just does boxes. No, I also do couture diabetic shoes and I have a wonderful, small but wonderful clientele that really depends on me for making diabetic and orthopedic shoes for them stylish and beautiful. I do everything from masks to shoes of different types. I've done things for film, uh, for theater pieces, um, just all kinds of things. I, I guess if someone were to say to me, like, what's your art? I say to them, my art is whatever I can put my hands on. Not everybody's a glitzy girl. I'm a glitzy girl. And I like lots of glitz and bling bling and all of that, but not everybody likes that. And so when I'm tuned in to my client or I'm tuned into a specific piece that I'm doing, there is beauty in everything. Every time I create a box or a container or a shopping bag, I do have to always consider the giver and the receiver and the magic that's about to happen for both parties because there's such a tremendous amount of joy in the action of giving. That's a tremendous amount of joy you receive from that. It's important for me that when the person who then receives this gift, they're receiving emotion and feelings and uh, feelings of, I'm so special that this person took the time to contract this other person, meaning me, to do something so beautiful for them. So now what happens if I'm successful 
is that the receiver is now able, able to savor that moment. And the savoring of that moment is something that is like, you can't erase that from your brain. And now it bounces back like a wave because the person who gave the gift is usually in the presence of that person and they're seeing how much joy that that person received. So this is a back and forth situation of emotions and feeling. It's, as the kids say and people say, it's all good. And so my job is to make the experience of the giver and the receiver a stellar one. These beauty and plain lines, there's beauty in the bling bling, but there's also a quiet beauty and some that is a screaming beauty. I just kind of make a decision and I just kind of do that automatically. Oh, this is a quiet, this is a quiet piece, this is a lively piece, this is a whimsical piece. And as I go along and I just do that, I have a workshop, um, I don't let anybody in there because it looks like a mad scientist place. However, I have been collecting artifacts for, I would say, probably 15 years now. I'll be right back with more of my conversation with Eleanor Lyon. Eleanor Linen, an artist with a passion for the art of gift wrapping, has produced countless numbers of spectacular gift presentations and realizes yet another dream that she attributes to divine intervention. My book, Uniquely Gifted, that was a labor of love. Another, I also feel, divine intervention again. You know, I look for I always wanted to do this coffee table book that featured my present sculptures. And that's in fact what they are. But I wanted to find the right photographer. And couldn't really, in that day and time, couldn't afford the right photographer. And then one day somebody said to me, oh, you need a headshot? You should see the guy in, like that lives right in back of you. And they fly him all around the country, he works great advertising, he's wonderful lifestyle shots and what have you. I said, why don't you go get your head shot there? And I did. And I looked at his work, his name is Mark Vaughn. He has eventually become my partner as well. And Mark is a phenomenal photographer and he brought my pieces to life. And when I went to him and I said, Mark, how would you like to enjoy me in this coffee table book? He said, well, what do you do? And I said to him, I create present sculptures. He says, what is that? I said to him, they're gift wraps at an art gallery level. And he looked at them and he said, I've never seen anything like this before. And I said, and I hope you never do. And he said, I'm in. And that was, uh, I don't know, four years ago, three years ago. And it took us probably, I would say, nine months. We got the book out nine months, which is not bad. And, and it's inspired, uniquely gifted. It's inspired the creations, inspired the anecdotal stories in them, and vice versa. So there were a lot of clients that would come to me and tell me, this is why I would like you to wrap this a particular way and create a present sculpture for me. And they would say, all kinds of things that would tell me love stories about people who are getting married or somebody getting divorced or some reason that they were sad and they wanted to uplift them. But the little anecdotal stories are right next to the present sculptures in the book. And um, it's, a, I think, a wonderful coffee table book, plus it's a guest journal. So there's lots of room in the back for people to come and be creative in your home. So every time you have a party, you can have somebody write something in the back. And I wanted it, my creations, to give to my audience. And then I want you as the consumer to be creative. Now, there is no way that I was going to be in the company of this extraordinary artist without asking for some tips to help us all with creating our own present sculptures. She makes it look so easy. So, take it away, Eleanor. Wrapping a box, it's not that difficult. And in fact, 
If you're challenged because you just can't deal with paper, let me give you a few suggestions on how you can get around that. Now, it will require you to have a few items in your house, and you probably do have them. So, let's say you don't have any paper at all, but you do have aluminum foil. Okay. Aluminum foil is fine all by itself, but I like to crinkle it up a little bit. And now we unwrap it, and in fact, to execute this, you're also going to need a little bit of glue. Now for me, the fastest way for me to do everything is simply a spray glue. Okay, so now the spray glue is done, try to do that in a ventilated area. And now you're just going to put the aluminum foil down. Now notice, we now have texture. How beautiful is texture? And I must say, as an artist, I find the texture of aluminum foil to be quite compelling. So we now have texture. Now you're saying to yourself, well, I don't want everybody to think that I didn't think enough of them to not do like paper and I just used aluminum foil, that's okay something that I keep around all the time and it's just a gold ink pen and you got to shake it up a little bit and then right over these little areas where there is texture you can just go right over the areas and now you're creating a little bit of gold highlights and if you like you go in the areas that are not elevated so it's kind of using the negative and the positive space. That's one technique you can use. And eventually you'll see you'll form your own pattern. And it looks beautiful. When all is said and done and you finish this, you will create a gold and silver mosaic. Now to this you can add all kinds of bows, such as this and you can add bows to them. And I just want you to get a sense of, eventually when all this area is done and you add the bows, you will have a beautiful package. Problem number two, I have a box and it's damaged. I have this issue all the time. You can use, I have sponge brushes here and they cost maybe about 50 cents, but you can also use a sponge from your kitchen. And you just moisten it a tad and any kind of paint that you might have around the house. I happen to keep little paints like this, little folk art paint, it's easy. So now all I'm doing is going to create a watercolor kind of scenario. Now notice that I already have water stains on this, so try not to fight the problem of the box. In fact, work with the problem. So what you're gonna do now is just, again, very loose, very moistened, and just take your sponge brush. Look at this, I've already almost finished an entire side. Now I'm moving to the front. How long is this? 20 seconds, 30 seconds? No problem whatsoever. Now, if I have a second color, I'm gonna also add a little turquoise. I happen to love turquoise. So, wow, now look what we have we have kind of a rainbow look. Now your friends are gonna think that you've suddenly become very artistic. And in a way you have. So look, this is not looking very nice over here. So we're just gonna add a little extra sweep of color. Another sweep of color. And we're gonna do this in all the different sides. Now when this is dry, and it won't take long. I would suspect you could probably go, if you're a woman, go and put your, your makeup on before a party. And if you're a guy, you can go and take your shower or maybe watch a little bit of a game. And this should be dry. Once it's all dry, then we're gonna do a little extra, little something to it. I love the look of lace. I've always loved the look of lace. So had these in my pantry. I don't know what party I had in the front, but they're a little doily, and the doily was a wonderful little thing that I saved. And so now I'm gonna create a lace look on top of this. So I'm gonna press it down firmly. I'm gonna take a little bit of gold paint. 
and just do where the doily was. Again, you should be using in a ventilated area. Look what I have now. What a beautiful, beautiful type of pattern that we've created. Again, all you have to do at this point is add a bow. Now, isn't that simple? That's just something very quick. Anyway, enjoy your creative gift wrapping because all you have to do is look around and I'm sure you're going to find many, many things in your house in order to create beautiful gift wrapping. For more information about Eleanor Linen and access to her gift wrapping tips and other exclusive extras, visit us online at talkwithaudrey.com. Isn't it amazing what you can do with things you probably already have? And that also applies to your talents. Just like Eleanor, you have what it takes to inspire someone to be successful and to pursue your dream. So are you listening to the signs that may just point you towards realizing your potential? If so, what's stopping you from pursuing your passion? No excuse is going to get you off the hook because there's never going to be a right time and you may never have the money or the resources you need. Just start right where you are and with what you have. Think about it. I'm Audrey Adams. Thanks for watching the special edition of Talk with Audrey. I'll see you next week.